All right, so this is where the last part of the modeling uh, process would typically be is that you would have the drone um, set up inside of Cinema. All the pieces are here. You see I still have all of my symmetries. Um, all of my subdivisions are here. My cloners are still linked up to this. <clears throat> There's no animation on it. It's just the straight up model of what I have. Um, the next part of this that we have to do is we have to go through and get rid of all the cloners and the um, subdivision surfaces and anything else that we might need to, um, uh, we might have on there so that it's nice and clean. So I'm just going to go through and starting off, uh, let's say here, let me just see what I have. All right, some of these objects are just nothing objects. So I'm just going to delete the nothing objects. There we go. Uh, this is just a regular cylinder. It doesn't need to have that C button hit, so that's clean. This is clean if I go into the bars. Um, these ones are clean, but down here on these cubes, those are not. So I want to hit C on those so that they are nice and clean. Um, these were um, some bars that I had inside here. There they are. Um, I'm not actually going to use those, so I can just delete them, actually. Um, I don't need the bars. Um, here's a null. Here's a bend. All right, so this one is all these little pieces that are inside this. So I need to lock that into an actual piece. If I try to bring this into Keyshot, it won't let me bring it in. It'll just not show anything. So I'm going to go to the null up at the top, go to Objects, and say Current State to Object. And what that should get me is all the individual pieces for that um, specific part. Okay, um, I can delete the null now. Everything should still look the same. All the pieces are still there. <clears throat> Typically, I don't like to have a bunch of tiny pieces. So all of those are a bunch of tiny cylinders. I want to make those all into one. So I'm going to go to this null, go to this thing, not that thing, go to the next one, and go to connect. That makes a connect node, which puts all the pieces together. <clears throat> uh, you can see how they're actually connecting and kind of subdividing. So I'm going to turn the subdivision off so they don't do that. And then I'm going to hit C on that connect. And now all of these pieces are basically locked into one piece. OK? Uh, and then I'm going to label this grid. And then I'll pull it out of that area and then delete the um, null. Here's another one. What is this one here? Uh, there's my propeller. So same thing. I'm going to hit C on the propeller. That creates all the propeller blades. So I'm going to hold down Alt, go to the connect. Make sure I'm clicked on the cloner. Hit C on it, and now I should have just one blade right here. And I'll drop that out of there and delete. Here's my blade. This is the blade guard. This is uh, the old motor housing, so I don't need that. And I think this is also something that was old. I don't need that anymore. <coughs> uh, let's go into this area. This is my motor top. Motor housing. This is my drone body. And this is my uh, blade top or propeller top. Okay. Um, so this is all of my pieces here, and then I have some other stuff there for all of my winch things. So let me go and take care of that real quick. And you'll see the process is the same, regardless of the number of pieces you have, any of this. So I just go into it, I hit C on it, and then label it what it is. Uh, winch, winder. This is the rope, so I hit C on the rope. Um, I don't need the caps here. They don't even show up, so I can just delete them. And I know that ahead of time. That's why I'm, you know, just kind of deleting stuff. Uh, winch side. This is the winch arm. So I'll hit C on it. Here's a torus that needs to have C hit on it. And the names aren't terribly important. Um, it just helps you kind of later on. I just have to hit C. That doesn't need it. This one does. 
So this is the hook. All right, so I'll just drag that out, delete this. Okay. Uh, so all this stuff is basically the winch. Okay, so all of that is just winch stuff. Um, here's more of my drone. So let me go into this symmetry and hit C. Go into this symmetry and hit C. Okay, go to my subdivision um, and hit C on that as well. Oops, once I turn it on. All right, now that is, everything is all C'd out. All the buttons are hit. Everything is locked in. Um, if I were to bring this into Keyshot right now, everything would work. It would show up all, it would show all the pieces. Um, the next step I have to do though is it's not going to let me animate all of these things because they're still part of the same group. So if I were to, let's say, go to my uh, blades here and I tried to rotate them, you'll see that all the blades are rotating as one big group because they're all connected together. So I have to go under mesh, under uh, conversion and say poly groups to object that takes that group and splits it up into all the different pieces. So this will give us another object for every single one of those blades. It takes a second, there it is. And then I'm gonna go through and grab all the blades for one specific piece, group those together, and then do that connect again. Okay, blade one. Now I know because I have eight blades that every um, eight of these will be a new group. And if I mess up, then I can just hit, you know, the C button again and then fix that. Blade two, or blad two. Blade four. And obviously you can see them being uh, selected over there. Now, if an object isn't moving, it doesn't matter. I could have every object that's the same material, same, uh, uh, thing all connected, that doesn't matter. As long as it's something that I'm gonna be animating, it needs to be set up so that it's animatable. All right. all right, so there's all my blades. I can delete the connects and then I'll keep them in order. One, two, three, four. Um, here's my grids. This is an example of that. The grids don't move. They're just locked into that area. They're always gonna be the same color regardless of where they're at. So those can stay as one piece, that's fine. Uh, my motor top though, um, that part will spin with the blades. So right here. So that's another one that I need to go to mesh, conversion, polygrouped object. There's each one of these. There's no new connection now. They're all single objects. So I simply will just put um, motor one under blade one, motor two under blade two. Oops, I just want these like next to it in there. There we go. I don't want them actually underneath it. I want them uh, like parented to it. I want them just there. All right, then that motor top group can go away. Motor housing is fine. Those are all gonna be the same thing. The drone body is fine. That's all part of the same thing. And then blade top, which is the little cap, will be another one that I have to then separate and then put these together. And the reason I'm putting them by the other ones is because they all have to be grouped so that they all transfer into um, key shot nice and clean. Uh, blade guards are fine too. Those are just by themselves. Okay. So now I'm going to take all my blade parts. So all the stuff that would go to blade one, I group that together. And I say blade one underscore anim. That way I know that that's the one I'm going to be animating. Do the same thing for blade two. The same thing for blade three. And the same thing for blade four. Now, before I go um, oops, still into key shot, what do I have selected here? There we go. Um, I have to make sure that all my blades are pivoting around the right spot. So I know that blade one, if I grab this blade one anim group and I rotate it, that rotates around the correct spot. Let me go to blade two, and you'll see blade twos is animating around this spot. Okay, now obviously we have to fix that so that when we go into key shot, it spins around the correct area, not around where it currently is. So I'm gonna to switch to my top view. <clears throat> I'm gonna hit L so I can get to my pivot. I'm gonna to go to the move tool and I'm just gonna move it over. Now this should be exact. 
And the way that we get it exact is we turn snap on. And if I move this green spot, I should be snapping to points. And there should be a point right at the center of this. So close. Nope, it's on grid point right now. Let me turn that off. There we go. All right, so that one's good. Now we'll go to number three and do the same thing. So move that up. Zoom in on it. And then snap it right there. Go to number four. And same deal. Now the more divisions there are, the slower this is going to go. So you just have to be patient uh, while you're moving these things around. Yep, that's good. Okay. Um, it's a lot easier to test things here, so I'm just going to spin the blade, verify that it looks like it's spinning perfectly round, it is, and then hit undo. If you notice any wobble, you want to fix that here. It's a lot easier to fix it here than to fix it in Keyshot. Number one I know works. Number two uh, also works. Okay. Um, and just so you can see this too, if this is off even just a, a small amount, you can see how I barely moved that over. And then I go to rotate, you'll see the blade has this like weird wobble to it where it's like you can see it kind of like shifting back and forth because of how that's set up. So you really want to make sure that that pivot is exactly in the center. All right, so there we go. So that's all set up. There's my blades, grid, yes, yes, yes. Winch is all set up. I don't need these cameras. Those can go bye bye. The null can go bye bye. Uh, whatever this layer is here, that can go away. That can go away. All right, uh, I'm going to delete all my materials in the scene. I don't need any of those. And then I will delete all of these materials. Those were just my placeholder ones I had from before. Uh, there's nothing on that. Good. OK. Um, so I have that set up. Um, now I need to put in my placeholder materials. Keyshot will automatically allow me to exchange materials or swap the materials. I just have to put in a placeholder so that it knows which objects are separate colors. Okay? If it's faces, I can grab faces and do it. If it's whole objects, I can grab whole objects. So I'm just going to make um, several materials, take the color off. I'm not even going to name the materials. That doesn't matter right now. Uh, just go to luminance and just give them some crazy bright color. And then I'm just going to turn off my wires here so I can see this, and I'll drop it onto that. <clears throat> now when I go into Keyshot, Keyshot will recognize those materials as a same material. So when I drop a new one on there, it'll replace all those with that material, okay, with whatever material I drop. Um, I'm just going to copy this one, change the color. And it doesn't have to be anything drastic, just something so I can see that I've done it. And then I'll just do this to each one of these propeller blades. go copy it again change the color drop this on let's say the drone body copy it again different color have some of these pieces right there, so I want to make sure I get that. And you'll see how I'm not even caring about what material it is. I'm just simply going through and grabbing any color uh, on there, just so it's a separate color. Oh, there goes my camera again. You can override these two inside Cinema or inside Keyshot if you realize, oops, I want a different material. Um, you can do that on an object um, setup, but you can't do it on a face. So if you had specific faces that you wanted to assign a material to, you really want to do that inside of here. I think maybe that spool would probably be the same color as well. And maybe even that bar and this. And then there 
There's the rope. There's the hook. And even if the colors are the same, it's fine because uh, Keyshot will still recognize them as separate materials. Um, so here's an example of maybe I want faces um, to be a different material. I'm going to make a new material here. I'll give it blue because that's kind of far away from the um, color of the legs here. And I'm going to go to face mode. I'm going to go to my marquee, make sure that my setup is tolerant and only visible is off. I'll just grab a little area here. Now that should go all the way through to the other side. Now the trick is going to be grabbing this side too. I think it's, I think I better check. It's this row here that goes along the bottom of this, that goes along the bottom of that. Is that right? That's pretty close. All right, hopefully it's right. Uh, then I just drag this onto those faces. And now I have that blue stripe on there. And then when I get into key shot, I can assign a different material to just that blue stripe. OK, um, cool. So everything has its own unique material here assigned to it. Even like I said, they're the same color or similar color. Keyshot will be forgiving and it'll just recognize the labels um, on there. Wait, did you do the same thing in Dimension too? I don't know about that. Okay. <clears throat> um, you played with it. I think you said that it does allow you to do that. Uh, right, so it did recognize the different materials and allow you to update those. An FBX, yep. Um, especially when you get into animations. OBJs can't store animations where FBXs can, okay? All right, so the color part is all set up. <clears throat> the next thing I need to do is animate it. Part of this will be animated in um, Cinema. Part of it will be animated in Keyshot. Um, some things that's easy to do in Keyshot is straightforward animations. We want the blades to spin. That's a straightforward animation. <laughs> The kind of like wobbling of the um, drone, that's very difficult to do inside Keyshot. Okay, so we're gonna do the drone lifting off here. When we get into Keyshot, we'll just do the blade spinning. Okay, so I need to have a group, that's everything. So I have my drone group. Um, I'm gonna give myself enough frames. Um, I think on the sheet I said six seconds, I'll verify it. That's stylized environment. Uh, six seconds, yes. So uh, that's 180 frames, right? Six times 30 is 180. Um, think about future stuff, what you might want to do with these things. Um, if you decide you want to use this as a portfolio project, you may want to go eight seconds or 10 seconds to allow yourself enough time to have a more complex animation, okay? So I'm going to leave it at 180, but the, the end one I'm going to show you was, I think, uh, 10 seconds or 12 seconds, okay? So uh, we should have about two seconds of this drone sitting here doing nothing. That's when the blades are starting to spin. Once the blades are fully spinning, then it lifts off the ground, okay? So we should have no keyframes from zero to 60, and then all the other keyframes are gonna happen after this. So I'm gonna click on my drone, make sure I'm on frame 60, go to my coordinates, and just set a keyframe for rotation and position. So it says at zero, uh, frame 60, you're just sitting there. Then I'll go up to, let's say, 120. And I will move it up just a slight bit. Now, we're using our artistic license here. Typically, when you click the drone and you say go, they just fly straight up in the air. That's why they're so like hard to, to uh, control. OK. Uh, and then I'm going to go to 180, and I will lift it up even further and give it a little bit of rotation, a little bit of rotation, and a little bit of movement. Okay. And I'm being very gentle with how much I'm moving this. Um, you want to be, especially at first. Okay, So now here's my animation. It does nothing for 60 frames. And it lifts off the ground, and then it goes there. Now I'm going to give it a little bit of wiggle here. So 60, it says zero movement. Uh, I'm going to go to, let's say, 70 and just set some rotation keyframes. Go up to 90 and give it a little rotation making sure that I don't go through the ground, like I wouldn't want to go like that. Okay, go back to my drone, go back to rotation, 
go to, let's say, 106, give it a little bit of rotation the other way. And these aren't locked in numbers. I'm just kind of randomly like, this might be a good number to go to. All right, so now if we go here, we should get this. Nothing for two seconds. Kind of wobbles as it comes up. That might be too much wobble. And then it goes away. Great. All right, so I'm going to fix a couple things. I really don't care for the... The slowing down here looks weird. That's a bad thing. Um, and then how it's wobbling there, I'm really not a fan of either. So I'm going to adjust some of those. I'm going to right click on my rotation, go to show uh, F curve. And this will show you all of the keyframes that we have. Here's my rotation. Um, if you look, you'll see that there's not a whole lot. Uh, and of course, framing is different inside here. It's H uh, to frame all. So there's not a whole lot of rotation in the um, H, the PHB, the H direction. There's some in the P, and then there's none in this B one, okay? So, there we go. Um, so I'm gonna take maybe this keyframe here and just delete it. And then take this keyframe and maybe just move it over. There we go. Then I'm gonna go to the H, and maybe I'll delete this keyframe and that keyframe. And then let me see what that's gonna look like. Okay, and I'm just kind of randomly deleting some of these, and that should give us a little bit maybe a smoother animation. There we go. So now it feels more like it's like lifting off the ground and there is some kind of resistance on one side more than the other. All right. So that takes care of the rotation. Um, let me go to the uh, translate Y and the translate Z, I believe, are the two. So on translate Y, <clears throat> oops, come on. Uh, we'll see that this has this like flat area at the top right. That's slowing it down. So I'm going to click this. Nope. Um, that one? Oh, that should have worked. Why didn't that work? Linear? Yes. No. Uh, no, that should work. Why weren't you working? All right, whatever. I'm just going to grab this handle and just pull it down. Um, that should make it so that it feels like it's going to continually move. Same thing on this one. I'm just moving it up so that there is no, like, big slow motion at the end, and there's nothing in the X. All right, so now if we look at this again, let's rewind, let's hit play. There we go. All right, so that's as, as much of a movement as you really need to have on this. If you go too far, your camera's going to have to be really far back in order to see the entire movement of it because we're not going to have a typically moving camera. Okay. Um, all right, so that's good. So I'm going to rewind. I'm going to save this as, and you'll see my different iterations, animated, colors assigned, parts organized. Typically, that's how I do my um, stuff. Ready for key shot. Okay, you'll also notice I did no UV layout in here. Everything I'm gonna do is gonna be done texture-wise inside of key shot. Okay, uh, so now I'm gonna go into key shot. I'm gonna go to, um, close that. I'm going to go to import my geometry, ready for key shot, <clears throat> hit open. Um, on here, I'm going to make sure that I have my um, stuff set up. The defaults are typically fine. All right, everything should be good. So I hit import, it brings everything in. Before I do anything as far as textures or anything like that, I want to make sure that my animation works. If my animation doesn't come in, if something's missing, I need to fix that before I go any further because I can spend a lot of time basically like screwing around. Um, just so we can see how all the stuff um, comes in, sometimes it's like this where everything is closed. I don't know why it does, but it does. Under uh, Window, Library, Materials, that opens the left side. Under Window, Project, Scene, that opens the other side. You can obviously dock these in there. Uh, my computer isn't letting me because I think I turned that off because it was annoying me. Um, enable docking. I guess I did have that on. Oh, my dock is just way over here. That's why. All right. Well, just imagine it's over there. Why aren't you working, Keyshot? All right. So just pretend it's over there. All right. Um, so I'm going to open up. I guess we'll put it there. Uh, my animation. So animation, 
Hockey is A. You can see the hockeys as you go. Um, the way that it brings in the animation from that is it gives basically a bar. So here's the drone's animation. Here's that bar. It's reading in the animation from cinema. Um, if I put that there, if I just kind of move and spin around a little bit and zoom out, um, left click and drag allows you to tumble, middle click lets you do that, and then the scroll wheel is your zooming in and out. So if I were to zoom out of this a little bit so I can see the whole timeline, click and drag, I can see that my drone should do what I had it do inside of cinema. Okay, if it doesn't, something's wrong, I need to fix it, obviously, before I go any further. Um, typically, I didn't hit C on something inside a key shot or inside a cinema. I need to go back, clean that up, and then it should be good. All right, so now I want the blades to spin. So I'm going to go into my um, properties here, into my scene, and find my subdivision surface, my symmetry, my symmetry. I should have labeled that. Oh, well. Um, blades. And then here's my blade animation. So this is what I want to animate. These are all the pieces. And it should be all of them. I don't know why that top piece isn't selecting. Let's check that out and see. Subdivision, symmetry. All right, it is there. It's just not as visibly being highlighted. Maybe if I rotate. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Um, so this is how simple the animation is inside of KeyShot, and this is why you can't do a lot of complex things because it's like pretty straightforward. You right click on it, you go to animation, and then you tell it the kind of animation you want to do. I want to rotate the blade. So I go to rotation. It drops in a little node here. Uh, when your drone is moving, typically the blades are spinning the entire time. So I'm going to take this animation and drag it all the way to the end of my scene here. And now my blade will spin the entire time. If I click and drag, you can see it spinning. Oops. Obviously, that's the wrong direction, right? So let's go click on our property. This is the property here. For whatever reason, sometimes it shrinks down. Here's all the stuff that's about it. So um, the first thing I want to do is make this ease in. Okay, So it's going to start off slower, and then it's going to gradually pick up speed. So I will click that. Uh, the next thing I need to do is change the direction. X is what it was currently rotating to, which makes it do you know this kind of like rotation in this weird direction. Um, it should be the Y direction. So if I go to Y, now it should spin around in a circle like that. Oops. There we go. Now we can see it. Um, now we don't want this to um, take forever, uh, or we don't want this to look believable, and obviously not take forever uh, as it's spinning. So this degree here needs to be cranked up a whole lot, OK? Um, by a whole lot, I mean like 15,000. Apparently 15,020 is what I'm going to go with today. Um, and the idea with this is that if you don't spin it fast enough, it'll look like the blades are doing this while it's lifting off the ground, and that looks fake. You want them to be kicked up. Now, if you're using dimensions, you'll have to see, can you animate in dimensions? It might be something where you would have to animate everything inside cinema and then bring it in there, which is fine. You just have to check that out. Yep. That's it. Yep. So you just set it at zero at the beginning and then 15,000 at the end, and then you should be good. It is, but here's the cool thing about this one is I can take this and I can, uh, not there. Um, Inside my scene, here's the animation. I can right click and copy it. Then I can go to Blade 2. Oh, just pretend that didn't happen. Blade 2, and then I can paste the animation there. And then I can go to Blade 3, and then paste the animation there. And then I can go to Blade 4, and then paste the animation there. So now all four of these are all synced up together. Okay. Uh, I do have to change one more thing before we continue. Um, typically, the blades all don't spin the same direction. It's opposite ones spin the same direction. Okay, so that right side one would spin the same way as the left back corner one. So I'm just going to grab. I think it's two and three. Yep. And I'm going to click on their property and just put a negative sign here. Click on number two, blade, negative, boom, and that's done. All right. So I can preview this. I hit play. The blades spin. 
and then it lifts off. Okay, so now the animation part is done. That's all we have to do for the animation. The next part um, I've shown before uh, in that last assignment, uh, but I'll go through um, a couple pieces, then I'll just do the body. <clears throat> so um, grab your material. So this is, let's say, plastic. Uh, let's say I'm going to do this red, hard, shiny plastic. You can see as I drop it on this, it only picks those materials that I've already grouped together. Here's my hard white. I'll drop that on the body. Here is, um, let's say, some brushed silver. Let's put that on these. Um, I do have that band that's on the leg still. Um, brushed. Let's do brushed red on there. Okay, and you can see how it does that there. Um, I can't do that inside of Keyshot by grabbing faces. Um, I have to do that in Cinema to set it up, and then in Keyshot, I can actually assign those pieces. If I wanted something in here to be like a different color, same thing. I would select the faces inside Keyshot, or inside Cinema, assign a material, then when I come in here, I can grab that. Um, all right, so the process will be the same. You grab your materials, you drop it onto the item you want. Um, there are some in here like um, uh, fabric-y ones, so let me erase that. Let me go down to... Uh, I'm right on it. Cloth and leather, go to cloth, and then here's where I could assign this to, let's say, the rope area, so it would have more of a cloth look to it. Now, I might need to adjust it. That looks like horrible gray cloth, so I'll double click. Here's the properties for it. Um, it puts a diffuse pattern on it, so if I go to textures and I go to this diffuse, it actually puts this like weaved pattern on here, uh, which is fine. Um, I'm going to go to my Where is the color? There it is, color down here. Um, and then just choose the correct color that I want. So I want this to be, let's say, a white rope. So I'm picking more whites for that. And it should give me um, something closer to what I want there. And then I'll do the same thing on this specular. Now, sometimes you're not going to be able to get the default ones to look the way you want. And sometimes you have to just go with, let's say I'm going to do a plastic or something and then modify the properties until it looks the way I want it to look. So this still doesn't look like white rope, even though up here it does. Um, so I'm just going to set this to plastic, uh, go to my textures at the top, and just uncheck these. And that way I can go here and just assign the color that I want. It also might be because it's underneath that it's kind of getting a shadow from it, so that might be also why it's kind of gray. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Um, here's my red. Maybe this is too red. I want to adjust this so that it's a darker red. There are other properties here you can play with. So if you don't want this to be like a plastic, you can go down to metallic paint, and it'll have the properties of a metallic paint type thing. The reflections are different. The... Um, shininess, obviously all those things would be different. Same thing here. Here's roughness, so I can pull that up and make these not so shiny, uh, reflective. They're still shiny, but they're really softer shininess now. Okay. All right, so you'll do that to all the items. So now I need uh, materials. So I showed last time how we have this um, label sheet. thinking. There we go. So here's my label sheet. Um, I just kind of squished everything so I can add more labels onto the other side. Um, I need to be able to bring one label in for each area. Okay, so I'm going to go to a new document. <clears throat> I'm going to make this the size of the document that I need. Um, whenever you're doing a resolution for your images, think of how close it's going to get to the camera. Okay, if my logo is going to fly right by the camera, like right on top of it, um, I need that to be nice and crisp. If it's something that's going to be off in the distance, typically you can get away with a smaller image. If you're unsure, you can go a little bit higher. Okay, so let's say 2048 by 2048 pixels is a good length. Um, sometimes you want that to be really crisp if this is going to be something that you projected onto like a big screen. For our stuff, that should be the highest we need to go. 
So, uh, oops, I also need to make sure this is um, RGB. I don't know why it's CMYK. And then I'm just going to go find a picture, find a texture, and then bring it into the other file. So I'm going to use this one. Uh, I think it's all grouped, yes. So I'm going to copy it. I'm going to paste it in here. And I'm going to resize it. Okay, so there's my logo. That's what's going to be on the, um, on the ship somewhere. Um, if I want to see what the transparency is going to look like, <clears throat> I can throw some crazy color in the background. Okay, and this will show me, okay, the white area is not see-through, so when I put it onto any color, I'm going to see that white. So I just need to be aware of that um, as I do my stuff, okay? Um, I guess I'll just hide that for now. Um, if I do want the white to be transparent, I need to grab this. Um, probably need to convert my text to outlines. Yes. And then I'm just going to hit Shift-M and then click that piece there. And then now if I... Oops. And there. There we go. So I think that's all of them. Um, so now if I were to give this a color like black, oops, let me delete the other stuff first, delete that. I think I missed it. That's not outlined, so that's why I didn't do that. All right, that's fine. Um, cool. There we go. So now if I were to color this black, and then I put that pink underneath it, now that would be see-through, and then whatever color I choose, that black label would just be on top of it. Okay. Uh, but again, it's kind of like whatever you specifically want to have for your um, label textures and all that stuff. There we go. All right, so um, this is just the label here. I have my transparency where I want it. I'm going to go to export, and I'm going to export this as a ping into my textures folder. So this is 70. Um, it's a ping. I hit OK. I want to make sure this is a high resolution. Uh, that's fine there. Transparent, yes. I don't want it on white. I want transparent for the background, and hit OK. All right, so that will automatically resize a document to exactly the size of that logo, which makes it easier when we start placing it inside of uh, Keyshot. Uh, so now here's how we get the, the label on there, is I'm going to click on the body, or double click it. Um, if I go to textures, this is where I can add a texture to the entire thing. So if this is supposed to be like a, a color that's on the entire thing or something like that, I could drop it here. If I go to labels, I can add multiple labels into the same area, and that's what I want to do. So I'm going to go to plus, add label texture, find my logo, and then there it is. So it just drops it right onto the um, item on top of it. It reads the transparency, and everything works. Now it does go all the way through. We're going to have to fix that. So I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to try to scroll down. Pull this out. There we go. Label textures. Uh, I'm going to say uh, two sided is off. And you'll see how it only projects now on the. Stop docking. See how annoying that is? Uh, let's just turn that off so we don't do that. Enable docking. There we go. Um, so now as I spin around, it's right here, it's not on the bottom. Um, it's also backwards, so there's another option inside of this textures area where I can flip the texture. So I can say flip horizontally, and there we go. If I grab the corners and drag it in holding Alt, it shrinks it down. <coughs> if I want to position it different uh, to a different spot, all I have to do is click, and it'll automatically move it to that spot. So I can just move this basically wherever I want to move it. And then again, shrink it down until it fits uh, correctly. So if I want it here, that's where I'm going to put it. Oops. That's the only issue that I have with this. It does that all the time. You click the wrong spot, and it'll do that. Um, I rotate this 90. Yes. Make sure I don't click on the body so it doesn't do that. 
Um, I could also say show translate, and then I can just move it. If I grab the right one, 90, yes. They're still working out some bugs with this, obviously. There we go. All right, so that's pretty centered right there. I can obviously adjust it further. When I'm done, I hit OK. So now that logo, that label, is stuck right on there. Now, if I want to adjust it, here's where you can adjust some of those properties as well, which is really cool. Um, need a bigger screen. Um, material, yes. Show all parts, up click. Uh, something is happening, it doesn't like something. Click this. I'm going to close cinema down. Something is not happy. Show all parts. It shouldn't be, though. Add a material. All right, let's just save this and then reboot this drone. Yes. Now, Keyshot 7 is pretty nice. Um, obviously, the features that we're using. Keyshot 8 has some really cool things where if you were to have, let's say, I oh, don't know, um, Let's say you wanted to add some bump to it where it actually like displaced it, moved it around. You can do that in Keyshot 8. Um, you could also add like flex to your stuff. All right. We're just going to open this in Keyshot 8. Um, the stuff that we're doing is going to be the same. I don't know why it's doing that. Now let's open drone Keyshot. No errors, I'm sure. Yep, no errors. Whatever. All right, so now we'll go back to our label. Here it is, right there. Oops. Uh, and then if we scroll down here, um, these are all how the um, item gets placed. If you need to adjust, let's say, the brightness or the contrast or whatever, you can uh, do that, of course. Uh, I'm going to go to the tech label properties, though. And this is where it gets really neat, because you can take this item and change how it's being, um, how the material is kind of playing with all the other ones. If you look at it, you can kind of see there's a little bit of a reflection of the blade right inside there. If I go to my specular and I pull this down, we won't see that. It's just like a hard black label now. Let me pull it up some. And then I can also go to roughness and I can pull this up and that will basically make it reflective, but it's not going to be like perfectly reflective. It'll just be kind of like a soft reflection. Okay, so you can adjust those things um, to just that label, which is really neat because let's say you had, I'm just going to go with something, um, uh, let's say metal here. All right, so this metal is like super reflective. I don't want the label to be super reflective, and now it's not. So you can see how just where it's transparent, we're getting those reflections, but on the label itself, we're not getting that. Go back to plastic. And like I said, with that transparency on here, I can really color this whatever color I want um, and still get that, oops, you don't close it, hit OK, and still get that label to be see-through if I wanted to. If I wanted the white on there, I could have left the white, and then that would have you know, obviously still had that on that. Um, and I can go the opposite, too. I can make my drone very rough. And then if I go to my label here, I can make this um, not rough at all and make the label really reflective. 
So if that was something I wanted, then obviously I could do that as well, okay? Uh, if I want more labels, I just hit the plus sign, go to add label, find my textures folder. I have a couple other ones, I have a power button. They're all gonna work exactly the same. Um, I don't want this to be two-sided. Oops. Spin this around. I want the label button to be right here. Move texture right there. And then I can hit OK. And then if I need to adjust any of the colors on it or any of the placement, here's blend with color so I can actually change the color. We don't really need to do that because, um, you know, we're dealing with Illustrator. Well, because it's black, it apparently does not want to change the color. There it goes, a little bit. Yeah, so it's not working with this black because you just can't blend black with anything, apparently. Um, but you just add a new one each time. So I also have my battery here. And then again, I could put my battery wherever I want to put the battery indicator. Okay, so that process will be the same, just dropping new materials on there. So the texturing works, the um, labels are on there, the animation's working. Um, then we're gonna re render our stuff out. Um, I can close this, uh, or actually let me set this up a little bit more. Let me change my environment. Um, it's a little bit too like kind of boring. Remember I can just drop these in here and change what kind of environment I'm dealing with. Good. Looks like he's floating. Let me check my animation. I may be, yeah, I'm further out. There we go. All right. Uh, let's see, three panel. Yeah, I think I like got two panel tiled. That's sufficient for what I'm doing. Uh, if I don't want the line there, I can go to my camera, um, not camera, go to environment, go down to uh, color, and just give this a solid color. So if I want this to be just like a black background, but still use all this lighting information, I can set that up as well. Um, or I can give it a little bit of a splash of color like this, and that works um, also. Um, if I want ground shadows, typically you do, otherwise it looks like it's floating, so typically you want that. Um, occlusion ground shadows will give you these areas where it's touching. The only downside of these is you really can't adjust them. So I typically don't use those on here because it just does that. Um, you can do ground reflections again. You can't adjust them, but you can have them. Um, if you wanted to do something where you have a little bit more control, there is under the add geometry a ground plane. There it is. And then what that does is it puts a brand new, here we go again. Come on. No, oh, is you reading that? No, oh, scroll up. I don't know why it's being so silly today. Um, let's save After Effects and close that out too. Set this to performance mode as well. there. All right, we'll save this again, and then we will close it and reopen it again. Typically, I don't have this many uh, troubles with it. Oh, it just crashed. Uh, and I'm just going to open up my finished one just so we can see it. Uh, but you can put in a ground plane, assign a material to that, and adjust what the reflections are doing. Uh, and that's what I did here. This is a ground plane. Um, I just created it just like I showed, add geometry, ground plane, drop a material on here, and then you can adjust all the properties for it. So if I set this as diffuse, you'll see it's just perfectly flat. If I said it's uh, metal, now I have this reflection on here, but then I can crank up that reflection to blur it out some, or give it a color as well. Okay, or I can do obviously plastic or paint or whatever. Okay, um, cool. 
Um, I also put an opacity on here. That's why the edge is so soft. If this opacity isn't on there, you get this hard edge because of that. So with this opacity, um, I just right click, go to uh, textures, color gradient. Um, I set the opacity to color. I made this white here. I made that black there. And basically what it's doing is it's creating this big circle and in the center of it, oh, I forgot, it's uh, also spherical down here. In the center of it is fully opaque. And then as it goes further out, it gets transparent. And that's why we get that softer edge, okay? Um, little things you'll pick up along the way as you start playing with this kind of thing. Um, and then I adjusted the colors there. Here I can pull the roughness down. You can see, I can pretty much see the drone right there, but I get these nice soft reflections versus those other ones. Um, I can also maybe darken this some so I don't have as many reflections overall. Okay, and this works hand in hand. So if I take this up here, we'll get bright reflections. I pull this down, we'll get darker reflections. And then that roughness just kind of like softens the look of the reflection on it. All right, so I added that to um, my environment is set up with the three panels here. I did adjust my brightness a little bit. So you can adjust those things after the fact as well, or darken things. Um, I didn't do any of that. Do have ground shadows, but you don't see them anyway. All right, cool. Um, and then under my camera image, what are you doing? Performance mode. that works like I said I've never had this many problems with key shot all right so under the image uh, I'm gonna set this up for my rendering of an animation um, our animation is 960 by 540. I can't type in 960 by 540 here. Um, I have to type in some sort of variation of it. So if I do 480 by 270, that's half of 960 by 540, okay? Um, that's just because it automatically sizes it to fit on the screen, and I don't have 960 by 540 pixels to fit on my screen, so I have to go smaller than that. Um, for my animation, I want to fit everything inside here. Okay, so if I go to the animation and I look at this, you can see how long my actual animation is. Like over eight seconds. It comes up, it does this thing, and then it flies away. Okay, so I want to be able to see every part of this. So it might take a second to get like a cool angle so you can see it kind of taking off and then being visible for most of the scene. And this is why if you move up too far, you can't see it. So I'm going to push this down to the bottom of the screen. Like that. Oops. And then I've stopped it. Let me pull that forward. And then it goes over. Okay. So that's pretty good. So it goes off screen. That's fine. It goes off right at the end. Cool. All right. So now the that part's all set up. Let me turn off all these other things too. I was kind of playing with some of these other settings that you could adjust inside of Keyshot as well. Um, then I would go to my render. I would go to animation. <clears throat> I would set this to 960 by 540. I would say entire duration. Don't do a video, you want frames. Put this into your folder, give it a name. Um, you can save these as TIFFs. And then under your options, we would want to set this up to a high enough number. Um, I'll show you my default, um, or the one I set it to was 80. I believe that's the default for it. Um, I'll show you when I get into After Effects of what that is going to do. Okay, um, And then you want to turn your stuff on. So I didn't hit render yet. I want to set this to, um, let's say, product. That will turn on the correct items here. I also want to go to render and turn on motion blur. And then when I go to my render here, I can say render in background. 
I click that, it opens up the Keyshot viewer, and it just goes through and renders out each one of those frames. After that, it's the same thing we've done. Bring it into After Effects, uh, make that into a movie, and then you're good. You'll also have a still for this. So again, we'll jump back to this value, and we'll type in a still number. The resolution is 3000 by 2400. So the same thing as before, you can't do 3000 by 2400 in here. So if you were to do 300 by, oops, unlock these and unlink them, um, 240, that's the proportions that we would need. And that's all we're really concerned about is proportions for this. Then we find a cool angle. Uh, we want to get this so the blades are kind of spinning. Maybe you want to even have it kind of lifting off the ground some. That's up to you as to what you want to do. Um, remember, you can go to the camera and you can adjust what the camera is doing. So if I wanted, um, let's say, a flatter camera or more of a perspective camera, I can adjust that as well. And then once we're all done, we go back to, uh, I have multiple cameras. I have to hit save here so it saves my actual camera so it doesn't move. I have to go to render, go to output, change this to 3000 automatically by 2400. Um, under the still image, sorry, not the animation. 2400, that gives us an 8 by 10. Hit render in background, same thing, it renders it out. Okay. Um, now, that's all we're doing really for the key shot part. We're assigning materials, the textures, the animation of the propellers, and then rendering out our animation of it moving, and then rendering out a still of it. Um, I recommend, too, if you have the time, render these out bigger. Okay? So this is 3,000 by 2,400 for that still. Double it. Because if you decided you want to actually print it and put it in your portfolio, you'll have a pretty good size to do it. If you do your animation at 960 by 540, and then you go to your demo reel a year later, and it's 1280 by 720, now you're scaling up that piece. So you, maybe you want to make them bigger right now instead of having to come back and re-render it or stretching your stuff out. Uh, let me pause this here so that doesn't keep playing. And then I'll open up this. Yours will not have as many issues playing with Keyshot as mine. I think it's just because I'm also recording, and I said I want to get rid of Keyshot 7, so it's already hating me, apparently. Uh, let me close this. There it goes. All right. So that's something else. Don't pay attention to that. Here's my Keyshot. All right. Um, I also did multiple angles. So when I tell my story of how my drone works, um, you guys can't see that very good, so I'm just going to add an adjustment layer. And then add a um, color correction, exposure, and then just brighten this up. That was too gentle. Let's go five. That's too much. Two. We're getting there. Three. That's good. Okay. Um, so for mine, I wanted to render out several cameras and do more of a storyline of the drones picking up speed and then taking off. And then here we see it from the other, other part. So I did a 360 camera. I didn't show the whole thing. So there it is kind of spinning around and then here's the blade spinning and then it starts to take off. And then here we see it taking off and flying away. So those things are blown out just because I put that exposure on there. Okay, so this is how I'm showing off my drone. Your drone doesn't have to have all this. Your drone can be bare bones, one angle, that's it. Okay, but I want to show off all that detail that I worked really hard on uh, because I think it's important to show those things off, especially for a demo reel or portfolio. You want people to see all this stuff that's on there. Um, if I'm here, this is how far I had to be away from my camera to see the entire drone's movement. You can't see anything. All those labels that I have on there, you can't see them. All the, uh, the winch, you can't see at all. But this view and that view, you get a really good shot of my label that I have here and that winch. You'll see I also put in a uh, depth of field, so the back legs are kind of fuzzy. Inside of Keyshot, inside the camera area, you check on depth of field, you pick your focus uh, point, and then you can adjust this f-stop to be more blurry or less blurry. Um, now this is what the stills look like. Oops, this one. Here it is. 
And this is with some adjustments. So there's no adjustments here. That looks pretty gross. And then here's with some adjustments. So I added some glows to this. I added some curves to it. Um, this is what those levels do, what those samples do. You can see each blade still. Okay, You can still see how uh, each one of these things is still visible. I don't want that. So I would kick up more samples around those blades so that as the motion blur is working, we see these, these blurry areas completely blurred out versus this, which basically you can still kind of see that. And I don't want to. Um, you could also, if I switch to one of my other views here, oops, not that one, this one. Let me get rid of my effects. Um, you can see on the ground all these shadows. There's a lot of shadow work on the ground too. You can't see the shadows. Let me turn that back on and then maybe we can see the shadows. Nope. Um, let's turn those off. Let's add an exposure here. There we go. All right, so now you can see all the shadows. And it's the same idea, is that all these shadows are here. There's not enough samples to help blend all those things together so that we don't see as many shadows that are there. Um, now, you'll also notice that I'm in After Effects doing all my compositing. And there's a reason for that. Um, number one, After Effects has some things that Photoshop doesn't have. So this star glow filter that's giving me this kind of glowing effect, that's in, photo, that's in After Effects. It's not in Photoshop. Also. All the stuff that I did to this to get it to look the way it looks, if I wanted to do that onto another image, I basically have to go through all these steps in Photoshop again to redo all those things, to redo a star glow, to redo a camera blur, to redo a curves. Now, I could have that as a separate adjustment layer in Photoshop, but in After Effects, it's very simple to do where if I had one image or 50 images, everything would just affect all those other things. So I bring all my stuff in here. And then all those effects happen right to it. And if I need to adjust it because I don't like how much glow we're getting on it, um, then I can go into the star glow. That's where it's coming from. And then I could take my um, opacity and take this down to like 20 or something. Okay. Now this is also, you're kind of seeing it kind of grainy. In order for me to work in After Effects, this is really sampled down. This is the end resolution of what it's going to look like. And you'll see it's taking a minute to load because it's 6,000 pixels, OK? Each one of my frames, my big frames, took about an hour and some minutes to calculate. Now, that seems like a long time, but it's something where you set it, and then you walk away, and then you come back later, and it's done. Let's see how long this takes. I guess while we're waiting for it to load. Um, I'll show you just quickly uh, if you wanted to add additional cameras in here. Um, the process works the same way for anything else. So I make a new camera. Let me unpause this. Um, I'm going to turn off my depth of field, turn off my motion blur so I don't you know, bog my system down more. And I set up where I want my camera to be. So let's say that I want my camera to get a shot right from here. I click Save. I give it a name. Rename cam from above. And then when I go to render, all I have to do is say add to render queue. And what that does is it adds to the queue that camera. It should have added that camera. There it is. And it knows render this camera, this item, these settings. And then I can go to another camera, set that up again, add that to the queue. When I did all three of my passes, that's how I set them up. I set up my one camera moving around, added it to the queue, set up my other camera, added it to, added to the queue. Um, and then at the end, I just said process, and it just goes through and sets it all, renders each one of those. Now, if you're doing an animated camera, same process as we did before. Um, we would go to the Scene tab, right-click on the camera, and tell it how we want to animate. So if we're doing an orbit, which is what I did with the 360, you click Orbit. You get a um, bar right here. Where do you want to start? Where do you want to end? Here are the properties for it. And then there's my orbit. And I would render that camera out. There it is. There's the full resolution. You can see it's pretty, pretty 
clear once you zoom in. Like you can see the details on all of these pieces. Um, and that's the idea with this is that if you have something you've worked this hard on, you know, several weeks on, you want to be able to show that off. All the little grain right there, I think that really makes it kind of pull out uh, really nice. There's also a little seam on here. I didn't show that, but it's basically just grabbing a, the edges inside cinema and just extruding it in for that seam because, again, it makes it feel a little bit more realistic. Um, another thing I might do is maybe add something here, maybe a light bulb or something on those spots. I think that might kind of make it pull out a little bit more, a little fancier. You can see the blades. Like, that's the only thing that bothers me, these blades. So I'm going to have to go through, kick up the samples. And because this is in production, this is like us, you know, for school stuff, um, I would go in here and I would just go like that and then let it sit overnight. If it takes all night long to render that one out, I don't care if it takes all night long. It'll look great. Um, you can go further, but 80 was where it was at. That's two, not enough divisions or not enough samples. 160 is probably good. But just to be safe, I'll kick it up to that. And that way I don't have to come back after two hours and then start it again. Well, the samples are where it's going through each frame and figuring out how smooth your stuff is. So if I were to have set that to a smaller number of, of spins, definitely it wouldn't have mattered, right? So if it's only going, let's say, five degrees, there's not enough stuff there that even matters. But because it's spinning so fast, I want that blurring to be nice and smooth. So there's no direct correlation between samples and rotations. It's just simply a matter of this isn't enough, I need more, right? Um, if this was production, we would need to find that exact number because typically we are going to need to render out entire animation of this. And if it's one hour for one frame, well, a whole 30 second animation of this is, you know, how much longer, right? 900 hours of rendering. Um, cool. All right. So once you're done with this, you should have your cinema file, you should have your textures, your label sheet, your um, animation, and your. Um, still image that you have ready to go. And then that's our last big assignment. Questions on it?